Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we will be talking about a really cool thing. So as you might see I have one of my games in here. You can check out the game in the description. The links are there. <laughs> so uh, as you can see now I have an ordinary button on top of my game so that whenever we start the game we want that button to start our game basically. But whenever we click to start the game, we have to hold and then remove or hold, then the game will start, then we will have to hold it again. So we don't actually want that. Let me test it again. So we have to hold it, remove or hold, and then the game starts and then we have to hold it again. For hyper casual games, this is really not cool. But today we are going to create our own type of the button, which will tell the game to whenever we click just start the game without needing to hold and then remove or hold and then hold it again so let me test it again so we just need to click and just like that we will get into the game so let's get into the video and see how we do that before we start the video, a quick note from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a platform that you can find a ton of courses on any subject that you want, from game development to game design, UI, and everything else. I personally love Skillshare, and it's my go-to place whenever I need to learn a new skill. And I also have my own courses on Skillshare. If you want to get access to all of the courses on Skillshare for free, then I have a good news for you. Now you can use our special link in the description and get 30 days of every course on Skillshare for free. So use that. Okay, before we start, there are some things that we need to talk about. Okay, because in this video, I'm just going to tell you how you can click and do your things. Okay, because in my game, I currently have a menu UI, okay, which uh, in here it says hold and drag to move. Whenever I press it, my character will start to move and the camera will um, go up a little bit. So whatever you do whenever the game starts, it's up to you. It's not up to this video. Okay, so let me show you again. See, like that. My character starts to move. My menu UI just, uh, you know, it's, it's not active anymore and the camera will go up. So whatever you want to do, okay, whatever you want to do when the game starts, you have to specify that in another script. Let me show you mine, okay? So in my game manager, okay, or whatever script that you want to, uh, that you want to specify it from, I have created start game function that will handle whatever I want to do when the game starts. So I suggest you do the same. Uh, make a function which is called public void and then whatever name that you want and then do whatever that you want to happen when the game starts because we will call this function later. Okay, so good. Great. Now that we have that out of the way, let's move to the most important point of this video, which is handling the button. In order to avoid confusion, I'm just gonna hide my own canvas because I have a lot of buttons here. So I'm just gonna hide it, okay? So now when I play, I should not be able to move even when I click. See, I'm clicking and it's not moving. So it is great. Okay, so let's create a panel UI and then go to panel like that in order to make sure that it's going to cover the whole screen. And I'm gonna call it start panel. <clears throat> As you can see, it already created a new canvas for me. I've hidden my own canvas and this is a new one. Okay, so now let's see what will happen if we add a normal button to our uh, start panel. So let's just add a component and type button. Okay, now we have added an ordinary button and on click, whenever we click, what do we want to do? We will call the game manager. Okay, remember I have that script that start game from the game manager. So I'm just gonna call game manager and then say start game. Okay, 
So let's see what will happen. There are a couple of things that will happen, for sure, I know. <laughs> and the first thing is, whenever we click, it's not going to move, okay? And whenever I remove my holding the click, okay, the camera is going to move, the player is going to move, but the start panel is not hidden, okay? So the first problem is the start panel is not hidden, okay, like that. And also, I need to hold and then uh, remove the hold in order to start the game. So let's solve the first problem in order to solve the start, start panel not being hidden. There's a very a good shortcut way. We can just add something, okay? Instead of adding a script or anything, we will just get the start panel, our thing. And then we will say, in the note function, we will say game objects and set active to false. Remember, remember to uncheck this one, okay? So now, whenever we start the game, something different, a little bit different should happen. Whenever I hold my click, my player is still not moving, but whenever I remove my hold, the game will start, but now I need to hold and move. Okay, so that's a big problem, okay? Because imagine if you're a player, you're playing the game, and then when the game starts, <laughs> you need to hold and then remove your hold, and then hold again to play the game. So this is really bad. We don't want that. So, in order to do that, instead of having a normal button, we can create our own type of button, okay? So instead of having this button, we will create a normal, uh, sorry, another type of button that we will use. Okay, so in your uh, project folder, find some place to create a new script. So mine is in asset scripts tutorial because I'm doing this just for the tutorial. I already have it. So I'm just going to right click and then create a C sharp script. And I'm going to call it tap button script. Okay. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it tap button or whatever I want. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, tab button is in here. So I'm gonna open tab button and immediately there are a lot of things that we don't need. So for example, the start and uh, update, we don't need them. And also we don't need everything up top. So what do we need? Nothing, <laughs> only the name. No, actually we need to add some things up top. Okay, we need to call two namespaces. So we will say using Unity engine dot event systems, okay, and also we will say using Unity engine dot UI, okay, because we need the UI as well. Now you can see uh, after adding these two namespaces, we also have another error which says uh, we can't get the mono behavior. That's because we removed using Unity engine. It's okay, we don't need mono behavior. Instead of driving from that, we will drive from button, okay? So now our tap button script is a child or a style of a button, okay? We are creating our own type of button. Okay, so in here, we need to do some little things, okay? So the only thing that we need to do is to call public override void on pointer down okay so when we call this function what will happen uh we will call this function from our parent from the button and we will override it we will add some things into it okay it's it's already going to function as a button when it's being clicked or tapped but we will add some functionalities into it. What do we want to add? We want to add two things. First of all, we will say the game mana, sorry, game manager should start game, okay? And the second thing, we will deactivate the uh, start panel, okay? The panel, the, um, the thing here. We have to deactivate that. 
So, um, because the second one is really easy, so let's do that. Okay. So we will just say game object dot set active to false. Okay. It's going to get the game object that this script is going to be up top and set it active to false whenever we tap. Okay. And the other thing that we need to do is to call the game manager and tell tell the game manager to just start the game. Okay, let me move it. Yeah, we need to call this function. Okay, in order to call that function, uh, there are a, co a couple of ways to do that. But the most, probably the most common way is to, in here, okay, uh, make a public reference of that game manager and then drag it into the from the editor okay so we will type public game manager the same name as our script and then we will call it something i'm just going to call it game manager with a small uh, letter in the first place okay so in here after this one we'll just say game manager dot start game okay and let's see if it's going to work because that's all that we needed Okay, I'm going to hide this. Uh, wait, yeah, I'm going to hide that. And uh, what we need to do is in the start panel, instead of the button that we had already, we have created our own version of the button. So I'm going to remove that and then add our own version of button into here. As you can see, it looks a lot similar to our other button, but remember it's our own type and it does a little bit things a little bit differently okay so uh because we know that the things on click will not work because we have to click it and then hold and then remove or hold and things will happen we are not going to bother with here we're just going to play let's see if it works whenever we click now it should be playing but nothing is playing what is happening so if we go to our console we see that there we have a null reference exception. What is that? It is because we have, okay, we have created this public game manager, game manager reference, but we haven't added anything into it from the editor. Okay, so let's go and do that. When we come here, we can see that there is no option in order to add our game manager into it. Hmm, what is the problem? The problem is that because this is not driving from mono behavior, it's a type of a button, we can't drag things into it like that. So how are we going to call our game manager and start the game? So what we need to do, I'll just remove that, okay? And also remove this one as well. So now instead of uh, calling it as a reference like that, we have another way to do it. And that is by calling it as an instant. Okay, so how do we do that? Let me go to game manager. Okay, in the game manager, we want to make sure that this game manager has a saved instance reference in our memory. So let's go on top. Let me show you if it's your first time. It's really okay. It's really easy. There are only two things that we need to do. First of all, we need to do this. We need to type public static game manager the, the name of our script and then call it instance okay just on top of your script you can write this public static game manager instance and that's it and also when you start the game okay either in awake or in start okay but it's better to do that in the awake function because it's called earlier than start okay it doesn't matter which one it is but it's actually better to be in a week. Okay, we will just say instance is equal to this. So what do we mean by that? We will make a public reference, public static reference of our instance. So we will create, uh, we will reserve a place in our memory called instance, which is game manager. And whenever the game starts, we will say that reserved memory is equal to this script. Okay, so let's save that. Okay. We just had to add this and add this. Remember, don't worry about the other codes. It's just some things about my game. <laughs> okay. In the tab button, what do we need to do? We will just need to call that 
uh, reserved space of game manager in our uh, memory. So we will just say game manager, the same name as the script dot instance. Okay, dot instance will get the reserved memory and get that uh, static instance and then dot start game. Okay, that's all that we needed to do. So let me see if it works. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so now if I click, now you can see I don't have to hold it, remove my hold, and then, uh, you know, try to hold it again to play the game. Now I just have to click it once and just hold it and we can start playing the game. By the way, this game is actually really cool and I really like it. If you want to play the game, please. Its name is um, Group Attack 3D. You can download it uh, for iPhone and Android. The links will be in the description. That will be great. So before we end the video, I have just another thing that I want to tell you as an extra. You can just make the image to whatever you want. Okay. In here, in the start panel, you can make sure that like whenever the game is not started uh, it's showing something and it's telling you something to uh, to start the game so we, some people like it to be white a little bit you know uh, like something is on top of the screen or like a, a black sort of black type of tint but what I really like is to not have anything, okay? I don't want anything to be on top. I just go to the color and make sure that the alpha is zero so that it's crystal clear. And what I'd like to do is in the start panel, I'll just go to UI and Text Mesh Pro. I'll just add a Text Mesh Pro into it. And in the text, I'll say hold and drag to move, okay? Now the text is really big. Maybe make it 18. Yeah, it's good. We can make it bigger as well. I'll just make it bold and italic and put it in the center and just put it like that. Okay, so now when the game starts, okay, it's not going to have any kind of tint on top, but it will have that text which says hold and drag to move. So now when we hold, and drag, everything is working. The game is really fun. <laughs> okay, and let me show you one more thing. Uh, let me hide this canvas and let me show you my own canvas and tell you what I've done. As you can see, I also have that hand uh, thing and also I have that, that line on top of the hold and drag to move. So if you want me to make a separate video about uh, how to do this type of animation. I'll definitely do that. Please let me know in the comments or if you have any suggestions for other types of games or even this game, whatever function that <laughs> you can see in the game and you like, uh, please let me know in the comments and we will be there. And also this hold and drag is really fun. I've used even in my other games. So make sure to check my other games as well. Thank you guys for being here. Please use our links in the description for Skillshare and also try to test out our games. See you guys in the next video.